The Washington Nationals are your 2019 World Series champions. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching live. If you're watching live on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if this is Thursday morning and you're on your way to work, thank you for tuning in. Just thank you for tuning in, hanging out with us as we recap this final game of an exciting World Series. Seven games. We had a late inning comeback. If you're an Astros fan, it sucks, and you're probably not listening to this unless you're a glutton for punishment. But if you are any other baseball team besides maybe do the Nats have any rivals the Mets majority of people if you're a baseball fan we got a good game tonight we got a lot of storylines to talk about my name is John Boy I'm coming to you from New Jersey co-host Jake coming to you from Denver haven't talked to Jake yet don't know where his mind's at how are you doing great Jim I mean it's that's about as girl girled as good as a World Series gets yeah um uh, I mean, all the stories are kind of unbelievable. It's it's what makes sports awesome. I mean, you can you could point to almost any player on the Nationals roster, and there's like a cool story or something behind it. And you know what? We could kind of do the same thing with Houston too, but they kind of already won one, and they became the bad guys. Uh, the National story is awesome, man. I mean, the losing record to start the year, where they're at now, it's uh. It's unbelievable, and yeah, it was being pretty tough to Houston fans, but that's because they were kind of tough all season, and uh, good for the Nats, man. Yeah, in the end, the Nationals, the first time, like, World Series are always cool, but when you see guys like Zimmerman and Scherzer and these Howie Kendrick, like, getting up there, and this is their chance... It's really cool to see the Zimmerman celebration was really cool. Just holy shit. Like I just made a breakdown of the celebrations and Juan Soto, I was like, you know what? Fuck that. You're too young, dude. Like this this came too easy. Yeah. This came too easy to you, man. Everyone else fucking like Mr. Nat Zimmerman. He was on a lot of teams that should have done a lot of good things and didn't. Um but really cool. I mean this this Nationals team played better. When you counted them out, when Granky was rolling and the Nats were and the, and the Nats are down 2-0, and you're like, damn, Houston's gonna pull this through, and then uh oh, bam, 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 just like the silent killer Rendon hitting that home run, and uh, it's kind of how it was. Like I did, I tweeted it out. Every series, the wild card game, they were down. It was looking bad. It took a Trent Grisham accident or whatever to to change it, and then. The the next series, the Dodgers go up 2-1, and they're down, and they win two elimination games in a row. Then the Cardinals were bad. They they don't they don't last in this thing. What sorry, I, Cardinals fans. Sorry, sorry, Cardinals fans. You didn't put up a fight. And then they win the first two games easily, and everyone's saying, oh, it's the Nats. They got this. Like, wow, they just slapped them in the face. And then they lose three in a row at home, and they're like, uh-oh, there's no way they come back. There's no way. And count it out again. Down, were they down in game six? I don't even remember it so long ago. They're down in game seven. Like, they were just the stay in the fight. Stay in the fight's a pretty cool slogan. Yeah, and it, it added up for the team. And, yeah, let me um let me get all my nasty stuff out of the way. My my one low blow at Houston that I'll, I'll say that's kind of just outside of the baseball in the series. <laughs> but Houston officially has the worst home field advantage in the history of professional sports. Wow. Um, so... If, if any Houston fans act up in the coming years, you, you will get that response. Um, and the Nationals, and Jim, this is what we kind of, we tried to tell ourselves with the Yankees, but you also talk yourself out of it because you want them to be better and you start second chancing trades and signings and everything. If Trent Grisham fields a single to right field in the wild card game, we could have had extra innings. We could have had more baseball. Who knows what happens? Yeah. If the Dodgers don't go to Kershaw, uh, the guy who's got a bad playoff reputation, who knows what happens. Um, and then today, if Houston goes with Garrett Cole, 
uh, who knows what happens. So this is what we're try- kind of trying to say is that you need to be really good, and this Nationals team is really good, but you need some shit to go your way. And they also ended up getting some of that. So good Oh, for- yeah. Dude, Astros fans were so mad at you when you said, like, at the at the end of the Yankees Astro series and the comments they're like, Oh yeah, it's just luck and it's like, no, it's it's like eighty percent skill, but every team that wins the World Series had bounces, had lucky stuff, had mistakes made by the other team. And yeah, I don't we can get into this game a little longer. We gotta burn and stuff, but how are you feeling? It's not that late for you. I'm I'm like on this weird bubble of tired gassed but still super kind of excited and and trying to like you know i feel like uh trying to like milk this like i don't want like christmas to end like no it's still christmas day like let's hang out play with the presents let's not go to sleep that's how i feel yeah tomorrow we wake up baseball's gone for four months or whatever i i've I've got a little bit of that going and yeah all of halloween is the final day of the 2019 season and then it's on to 2020 which i'm excited for but uh, yeah, I also think I'm getting sick, um, so I've been pounding emergencies, so I've, I'm kind of juiced up, uh, not organically, and I've got that little end-of-season high going on, so I'm I'm pretty good, and I, you know, I, I should be full disclosure for the people, like, yes, I mean, Midway, once, once Houston came back, I was full bore rooting for the Nationals, I'm sorry, that's, like, probably, if, if you are, if you're the Houston guy or gal who's at your office today and you're like, I'm not going to listen to any baseball stuff, then it's 2.30, you're at work, and you're like, I'm about to kill myself. Let me listen to some baseball stuff. Like, this isn't what you want to hear, but I, I, I should be full disclosure. Like, yes, this Nats team, they hadn't done it before. They have so many old guys, so many cool stories. Soto, that, yeah, ended up ruined for them. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think they'd do it, Jim, and I think that was Houston's – Biggest thing, too, Houston had the same feelings that I had, that they had won the World Series beating the Yankees going on to face this kind of mishmash Nats team that had Howie Kendrick batting fifth, and they got punched in the mouth. They fought back, but they stayed in the fight. They stayed in the fight. Big shout-out to John Robinson. Just uh, gave a $20 donation. Says, let's go Nats. Love you. So, appreciate it. rob um, you have a burn for us. I'm excited to hear it. A World yeah. Series Game Seven burn. Don't even understand how you could how you could fathom to write such mm. a thing. You know what I think is going to be. You know what you you said like we have one day to celebrate this, then we move on to 2020. If you're a Nats fan, obviously that's different. You relish this right. all winter. Baby Shark at the parade is going to crush. Baby Shark's already crushing it. Every bar in Washington, D.C. Oh, my God. I'm kind of jealous of that. Every jukebox is being out-purchased by someone, and they're just playing Baby Shark. Just fucking dropping dimes, Baby Shark, on repeat. There's a couple miserable significant others at the bar. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's go to your burn. First, a word from a sponsor or two. Not for you guys on the YouTube, though. Just the podcast listeners. You ready? Oh, yeah. There we go. On your mark. Get set. Burn, Jakey Burn. The two best words in sports. Game seven. The Houston Astros hope that Zach has the green key to success. Hosting Mad Max Scherzer. Hoping to finish off the Nats Fury Road of a season. Buckle up. Bottom two. You lay, you lie, solo dolo in the Crawford box. Uh, one nothing Houston. Scherzer was getting in and out of trouble like a prep school kid whose dad was a lawyer until the bottom of the fifth. CC me on that email. Carlos Correa, RBI single off Rendon's glove. Two nothing Astros. Grinky was grooving until top seven. Anthony Rendon, throw it there. Nats are on the board. Grinky gets pulled for Garrett. Oh, Will Harris. And here's Howie Kendrick Lamar. Pitch don't kill my vibe. Howie goes <laughs> full dancing to make it three to two lead. Wow. Top eight. So young, so good, so toe. Juan gets an RBI single, showing the mental fortitude to make the score four to two. Top nine, the pest. Adam Eaton, two RBI single. It's 6-2 Nationals. 
Washington goes Scherzer to Patrick Kirk Corbain as they send Nats fans into a state of nirvana while the Astros season goes floating down the Daniel Hudson River. 6-2 final. The road team won every game, and the Washington Nationals are your 2019 World Series champions. We've, uh, Jake, we've, this is 2017. No, we didn't do them then. 2018, 2019, you burn every single Yankees game on Talking Yanks. So that's yep. like 162 times two. Nobody can do that math. No idea what that is. Plus all of these postseason games you've burned. And on game seven of the World Series, you <laughs> roll out, pitch don't kill my vibe. I mean... It's uh, I the only thing I compare it to is is Howie Kendrick's postseason run. Um, <laughs> I I found myself in a big spot. I swung hard, and good things happened. Oh, so young, so good, so t- so tall. That's pretty good too. Yeah, it's good, Jake. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Well done. We got a lot of people rolling in, uh, some donations, and I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Um. But we got to roll on with the show, so save questions for the end, and we'll do that after we wrap up the recording because the people on the podcast have no idea what you guys are asking and all that good stuff. They're not in the chat. Um, All right. How fucking bizarre is it that Granky was rolling and Scherzer was in trouble every inning? Yeah. Every inning besides the first, and he gave up a run in the first? I don't even remember. But the, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, he had at least two base runners on. And he finished five innings and only allowed two earned runs. And he he didn't have his plus stuff. He didn't get his first strikeout until the fourth inning. Um, and Dude, I know you, know, you could point old. to Babip, Babip gods and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, there was hard line drives to each outfielder, it felt like, with two runners on base every inning. This is the performance from Scherzer that turns you into an old man. And here's what I mean. Like yeah. when you're a young kid and you're like, how good was Don Larson? And you're like, well, he didn't have the best stuff, but he had the guts. He had the yeah. guile. He had the moxie. Nobody knew how he got out of it. On his worst day, he'd find a way. This is the shit that makes people say that. Like yeah. if anyone asked me about Scherzer's performance in 20 years, when I'm 50 years old, my kid asked me, I'd be like, oh, he was... He, he was, I don't know how he did it, son. Like, that's the type of answer. Like, how did he get out of it? You know what it was? It was a lot of hard hit balls that were luckily yeah. right at someone. <laughs> it was kind of luck. <laughs> but uh, there, there was, was a genuine, there was a genuine moment in the fourth inning where I think they were just doing like kind of a mini recap so far. And I was, I was like, just blanked. I had a brain fart for a second and it was like, like, the score had escaped me, and how they scored had escaped me. But I knew the Nationals hadn't done anything because Grinky had been incredible. And they were like, yeah, it's one nothing on the Gurriel homer. And I was like, that's it? Because it's they had runners on the bases for their big dudes. And it just – the it never hit the turf. There was the one Soto had got a little little nervous on, liner at him. He had the little yeah. scoop. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple to Robles, I think. It was um, – it was unreal. If this was talking Strohs, we we would be significantly depressed by how bad our quote unquote luck was. Well, there's some bad luck. There's that fucking bunt is so stupid. Yeah, Torinos has two hits in game six, two hits in game five. Scherzer just gave up home run. Single, single. Ask David Cohn, ex pitcher, if he would have if he would have taken a free out when your back's against the ropes in game seven. Yeah. You give up a fourth hit in a row, you're gonna give up a second run that that crumbles you. Instead, Torinos tries to bunt it. He's never been a bunter. His last bunt he popped out. It's you're literally telling Scherzer, like, don't worry, catch your breath, bud. We'll give you a breather. And you have Reddit coming up next anyway. That was, I was blown away that he tried to get that bunt down. I don't know who called for it. And there's a lot of game after that. And they had runners on like every inning after. So it's not, it's really like, you know, we shouldn't magnify it that much. 
But I tweeted at the time, like, that's that's crazy. That's ridiculous. So Yeah, I, I had I had a pretty good snarky night at Twitter. At that point, I tweeted, good job by Scherzer and Hinch to get out of that inning. Yeah, I wonder if Hinch made the call. But I, I couldn't believe it. Imagine if Scherzer goes four hits in I a mean, row, two runs score. To. They had to. Torino's had two home runs this series. Torino's <laughs> was playing pretty well. Oh, dude, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. And then there was uh, Alvarez got into one off Scherzer with two outs and two on deep center field. Altuve hits squares one up and it almost drops in. Mm, it kind of hung up there. It was a uh, it was it was a gutsy performance by Scherzer, and people are gonna forget that Granky outpitched him by a lot. There was a while where Zach Grinke was a hero. People people were tweeting there, you know, Zach Grinke has proven he's in the Hall of Famer, which he probably is anyways when you end up looking at the raw numbers. But this, he was kind of doing this special performance that when, when we did the show about this game, we were talking about, like, what could the storylines be? And Zach Grinke cementing himself as this kind of player in baseball history, which this sounds rude, but he's kind of currently not, like, He's a really nice ball player. Like it, Zach Greinke, you know, when we do the the twenty years from now game, which is kind of this hilarious and sick World Series vibe. Well, I'm watching. I'm already telling my son about the guile of uh, right of Scherzer twenty years from now. So we're already there. And, and what are you going to tell him about Greinke? Probably some jokes that are cool between me and my son, but okay. not cool on the podcast. Well, and so I think I, I have been tougher can on Granky on the podcast. Can I say something real quick? Sure. The people babying Granky, you're treating him worse than people that make slight jokes. People are treating yes. him like people are treating him like he has no brain. Like he has <laughs> he has social anxiety. Uh, I have existential anxiety. Jake's been depressed many of days of his life. Like it, Look he's. At me. He's not a brainless child that you need to wheel around the halls of the high school that like you can't like make a joke about. Yeah, and like, that's, that's so that's you, what... the overprotective people are treating him way worse than people who are just kind of busting balls. Well, that's that's what I I had been tough on Grinky because he had that one press conference where he gave one word answers and I was like, dude, what are you doing? And I don't know if you saw his press conference before this game. It was actually great. Mm -hmm. He made a couple jokes. He was talking about how he wished it was an NL game so he could swing the bat. I was like, yes, that's a real interview. Um, and, and you're exactly right because because I, I saw those tweets too and people are like, oh, anyone that makes fun of Zach Greinke. And it's like, I was making fun of Zach Greinke because he had a five-plus ERA in his last five playoff games or whatever. Like, can I still not critique him playing baseball? Um but that's that's sending us down kind of a bad alley. But no, I, I think it's going to be funny when when your kid looks at the box score and you're like, oh, Max Scherzer showed such guile, and they're going to be like, well, Grinky outpitched him, and it's like, oh yeah, he totally did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to do you want to get to the the, the the Rendon home run? Is interesting because uh, I don't know if you saw Pitch Ninja was tweeting it out. Grinky's fastball and his changeup are the same exact speed at times. They're both like yeah. 80, 88 miles per hour. His fastball can get up to 92. Sometimes it's like 88. And the changeup to Rendon was a changeup after a fastball that didn't break. Like usually it has that drop yeah. and that big tail. So it was basically batting practice fastball that Rendon crushes. Rendon in his post game is like, well, I'm pretty thankful for that short porch and left. Yeah. Which is like, like a nice little joke from him. Yeah, Rendon has – I don't think Rendon even knows that he was twisting the knife on Astros fans there a little bit. But um, I think he was self-deprecating. Like, he's like my favorite person all time. I, I still can't believe Anthony Rendon and his just personality traits. Um, but, yeah, that that's huge. And I, I think we need to go back to Grinky um, because, A, he put on an exhibition. You mentioned the fastball and changeup almost being the same thing, the changeup a little different movement. Um but not only was he mowing people down, but the soft contact was ridiculous and all the soft contact back at Zach Greinke. He put on a PFB exhibition in Game oh, 7 of the World cool. Series. Oh, A-Rod had a really good tweet. I think someone probably fed him the stats. But did you see his tweet on that? Oh, How was it like the most the most plays by a pitcher since Greg Maddox in a World Series game or something like that? Greinke's defense led MLB in fielding attempts by pitchers he allowed only two steals in six tries all year. That's kind of insane to me 
and that's yeah. the third coolest stat. And he turned 12 double plays this year. No other pitcher turned more than five. So the numbers yeah. two pitcher turned five double plays. Granky turned 12. That's insane. He uh, he put on an exhibition, and it was it was awesome seeing him in Game Seven, watching how composed he was, and literally, you know, that the the lines are easy, but yeah, if you see Zach Greinke pitching in May, and you see him in Game Seven of the World Series, you're same getting guy. same dude, same dude, uh, and awesome. the the compare and contrast between Max Scherzer on the other side is unbelievable. You're getting the same dude with Scherzer too, just a totally different dude. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just. <laughs> A, a dude, uh, Scherzer's the weirdo. Uh, if if we're if we're being honest, yeah, um, I was happy with how how great he was in his post game interview. Yeah, and you, uh, I know how much you love the the single cams of everyone's reaction. His running out of the dugout. I mean, you could just see like the relief, and and I I mean, we'll get to some of the emotional stuff for a lot of these guys later, but. Um, I mean, you know, someone like Max Scherzer, that was the last box he has to check. Um, oh, yes. I, uh, I mean, he is, yeah. He's he's everything. He already has, like, a Hall of Fame career and stuff, and that's the only thing that was missing. And, you know, who, this was going to be his best shot at it, if, if we're being honest. And uh, so, yeah, you just – you change as a person. That's why it's hard to repeat as a champion. Like, it's – that's that's the mental well, – I was going to say fortitude, and that was the score for a little bit. Fortitude. Um, All right, well, hold on. Going back to the gameplay. After the Rendon yeah. homer, right? Right. And Soto's up, and he he ends up walking Soto. There's a 2-1 pitch. That's a borderline off-speed pitch. That's Granky's most emotion he showed about a call because he knew kind of where yeah. he was at. He probably knew his... He probably knew, like, you know, if I walk him, I'm going to get pulled, all that stuff. And he's like, come on, that's a strike. And Soto's got his tongue out, having fun. That goes to a 3-1 count. He walks him. Now, he's at 80 pitches. And I think that had to be the worst two batters back-to-back all game. A home run and a walk. Two guys reached in a row. I don't think that happened all game. So, Hinch pulls him. They had Cole warming up. I actually don't think... Anyone can be that gung ho about like he needed to use call. I don't know if you are because you can go if they bring in Cole and Cole gives up a home run, then you're you're so easily saying like we have relievers. Why would we use the guy that's never relieved in his MLB yeah, career? Yeah, I don't think so. You you went to the best pitcher in baseball. I think that's the argument. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, I, I, the, the, the thing that neutralizes this argument is they made a conscious decision, and you do have a guy that pitched three days ago or two days ago um, who is going to be a free agent this year who has never come out of the bullpen, and the Astros made a decision before the game that they were only going to call for a clean inning. So yeah. that that's what you hide behind, and I <laughs> one, of, one of my buddies texted me this. He goes, is is a starting pitcher not being able to pitch out of the bullpen the most overrated thing in any sport? Because hey, end of the day, you gotta get the dude at at the plate out. And like, yes, there's something there coming in with runners on, and you gotta throw strikes immediately. You can't find the groove, but at the same time, like, hey, be good and get that dude out. Yeah, uh, Will Harris had a really good series and a really good postseason. Besides Game Six, when he gave up a home run. So uh, I would have stayed with Granky if I if I if it was me I would have stayed with Granky. Will Harris, that sucks, dude. Howie Kendrick, it wasn't even that bad of a pitch. Opens up with a great curveball, and then that pitch from Howie was a low outside fastball that might have gotten the corner, and Howie goes hunting after it and pokes it to the pole. I mean, it's a really good swing by Howie. I don't think it's that terrible of a pitch by Will Smith, but I feel bad for him because he actually kind of had a good postseason. That's not how it will be remembered now. But uh, I think that I think I think I would have left Granky in. He was at 80 pitches, and they were so confused by him. And it's not like you had, you know, Howie was up. He got past Rendon and Soto, even though he didn't get them out. But like you know, and not a knock on Howie, but. I would have left Granky in. I would have went and gave him a talk. Like, he went out there and he kind of touched his butt and was talking to him. And I was like, oh, he's just going to gauge how he feels and all that. Maybe Granky was like, I'm done. I doubt it. 
but yeah, I don't um, know. yeah, and it's it, it's the the part that ends up being funny about it is in the booth. John Smoltz had just given had just given Hinch so much love for staying with Grinky because coming into this game, they thought best case Grinky was going to give him five innings. Um, and Grinky ends up looking incredible, and they were giving Hinch credit for audibling from the script, and now <laughs> look where we are two hours later or whatever. Um, it's tough. He gave up two hits. He gave up the single to Soto and a homer to Rendon. <laughs> I mean, those are, those are the two guys that are going to get you. Um, and, yeah, for me – and the other part that makes this brutal for Houston fans, besides losing Game 7 of the World Series... Not more uh, brutal you can get. Yeah. Uh, is that I think Hinch had a quote before the game that they were actually thinking of kind of dodging Will Harris if they needed because he's been so worked this postseason and he gave up the home run in Game 6. So if you're a Houston fan, now you see he's the first guy out of the bullpen. Um if anything, I mean, I, I think you have to go Smith or Azuna there um, if you've made the conscious decision that you're not going Cole mid-inning. But I I tweeted it beforehand, and people were giving me some Jakey Nostradamus stuff, which it, it wasn't really that. But I don't know, man. If I was a fan of that team and, and we had the lead and we didn't go to Garrett Cole, the best pitcher in baseball, that would kill me. Yeah. I think kill Cole. Did you see all the tweets about his post game? Yeah, and that's I, I think we're going to hear more about that because right now it, it sounds and looks awful for a guy that ends up doing the press conference. You know, But like, if he's wearing a Boris hat and not an Astros hat, like if, if that's a real thing, yeah, that's fucking weird, Jake. Yeah. So the well, tweet is that he they asked him to do his post game, and he said, well, I don't have to. I'm not an employee of the Astros anymore. And they said, okay, well, I'll do it representing myself. If that's very joking, the tone, because they didn't, the reporters didn't say that it was joking. But if that's very joking, who cares? The fact he wearing a Boris, who's his agent, because he's a free agent now, hat. Yeah. Like if that's real, that's fucking weird, man. Yeah, and it's I mean, uh, that is weird. I, why does he own a Boris hat? If you're exactly like, why do you have that with you? Why? He had that ready um, in case they lost. What and you're 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 a team that's considering shelling out two hundred fifty million for a guy that <laughs> ten minutes after the World Series does that I don't know again I I think it's tough like I hope that's not a be, real thing it could also be Garrett Cole I I mean pic, picture if you are Garrett Cole who you're a part of the Astros and you know you you were ready to go to the bullpen and throw this game and it feels like. It feels like your manager kind of fucked you. I don't know. I, I would be pissed off as a competitor. So I don't know. I feel like we're going to hear more about that. I feel like right now it's kind of getting overblown, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, I would hope that it was like tongue in cheek or something like that. But, oh, man. How, what, what does that even mean? A, a fucking took off his Astros hat, put it on Boris hat for the post game, and uh, said right away, I'm not an employee anymore? Like, it's weird. I don't like it. I'm all yep. for him being mad that he didn't get pitched, but it almost makes me like just kind of weirded out about who is Garrett Cole. <laughs> yeah, there's a little who is Garrett Cole. I think it's more so. And uh, if, I, if, if 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 I was a Yankee fan and Garrett Cole was a Yankee and then a free agent and we lost and he did that, I'd be fucking mad. My fandom would make me really dislike him. Yeah, and that's I, I'm I was gonna tell the Houston listeners at their you know three o'clock witching out or hour that they're currently sat at work. I turn off turn off your ears for a second, but this is kind of the difference when you look at these two organizations. I mean, you've got Max Scherzer yelling one through twenty five like immediately after they won, and it's these old guys. None of the players had won a World Series, and they're just kind of this mismatch. Not even not a single one. Not a single player had won a World Series. That's cool. Dave Martinez had won one as a bench coach, but none of the Nationals players had won a World Series. And it's kind of this motley crew of dudes doing it. Asdrubal Cabrera, Ass Crabs. We had a nice internet interaction over that the other day. I can't wait to meet Asdrubal and discuss it with him now. Um, I mean, Howie Kendrick had his, his best season of Major League Baseball. Well... Like, 
This was this was the that this was Hinch's Hinch's whole post game or po- end of season speech that weirded me out when he was highlighting all the individual achievements, and then you have Scherzer asked about his performance in the postseason. His answer right away is it's a one through twenty five win. Whatever it's weird, and I, I that, think but that, I don't know who, who is Garrett Cole. Who the fuck puts on a Boris hat? And I, I think it ties into a guy who wants to get paid. I, I want a I, Boris hat. And, and I, it, it, I think this World Series and what I hope it really shows is that, and and if you are an analytical person, know that's awesome, and like know what is coming to baseball analytically is very cool, and in like improving the game. But know that there's another side to this. Like, if you're a GM, it's not a computer program. It's knowing that Howie Kendrick and Adam Eaton would be buddies in the dugout. Like, that shit doesn't just happen. Like, I, you have to know personalities and know, like, that you have this old man crew and a lot of that stuff. So, um, I don't know. I think we've gotten a little away from the rest of the game. Know who's not getting talked about at all and needs it? You? Well, yeah, okay. but dude, Corbin. Oh, yes. I was already in full making breakdowns and making tweets about like the end of the game and shit while Corbin was out there. He got in a little trouble in one inning, right? But he, dude, he I think goes. He the only double play ball, right? He goes three innings. Jimmy, That's three inning shutout. Yeah. Game two, seven. Two hits. In a one-run lead for part of that. 140 million bucks. I, I mean, Corbin's not getting mentioned enough for his performance. I guess he technically gets the win, so maybe maybe people people will be mentioning that more tomorrow. Uh, Corbin, Corbin did an incredible job. They put on the insurance run. Soto gets the RBI single. Adam Eaton with the bases loaded. I, I think if you were anyone that wasn't an Astros fan in that ninth inning, you were hoping Rendon or Soto just hit a crippling moon shot. Um, again, sorry, Houston. Fans, <laughs> You're that's being just mean, the James. reality of it. Being mean. Yeah, that's that's just the reality of it. And um, do you agree? Do you see Hudson had tears in his eyes before the last out was made? Like on the mound. Did not. Yeah, I put it in the breakdown of the celebrations. Who knows? Maybe it wasn't like crying. It definitely looks like he's getting choked up before he gets the last out. Yeah, it was funny. They they interviewed him after the game, and they were like, what was going through your mind? And I guess after every game they've won, he's been out there, and he's thrown his glove at someone in the dugout. But he said the uh, when he's been out there, I think two of them have been fly balls to center. So like he watches the fly ball, he gets a second to think about it, and he throws the glove. But he struck out Brantley, so he goes – uh yeah i struck out michael i kind of froze up for a second and then i was like shit gotta throw my glove um him and gomes had it almost timed perfectly where gomes threw his face mask yeah it's cool <sighs> jan gomes and yeah i i don't know it's just uh again if you were an astros fan and you're still tuning in for some reason that you were mad when we talked about luck when you won a six game set against the yankees one game that had a walk off and one that went 11 innings I, I mean, this game was the perfect example. Uh, a couple balls don't go your way, and it's baseball Susan. Yeah. I mean, yeah, not to discredit the Astros or the Nationals. Like, you need to be very, very, very good. But every baseball game, there's some breaks and some weird shit or some bad bad stuff. I can't believe we had the another Astros, home. Or, or the, the National season could have been over on October 1st. Do you think this postseason had the most amount of home runs that hit a foul ball? I think we had three. Uh, I would guess there's more. Straight clank guess. jobs. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, that was pretty cool. It was low, too. You uh, Do you agree with the, oh, wow, Jake, usually we take a break because we're, and then the next there's section the next is game. we preview the next game. Let's take a quick break, and then I'm going to ask Jake a question about the MVP. Quick break. Okay. Okay, back from a break. Jake, what are your thoughts on Strasburg getting MVP? I'm all right with it. He he won half the games of the series, and he he, he fought off an elimination oh, game. Oh, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Oh. Oh, you didn't play the song. Quick break. Remind me to edit this. 
and edit out the fuck up. Okay. Okay, Jake, how do you feel about Strasburg winning MVP? Now I got to think about what I said. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm good with it. He he won. They won four games. He won half of them. He fought off an elimination game in Houston to give them game seven. Um, after they just lost three games, he he looked incredible. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there there is a little bit of me that gets the whole – you know, it goes back to like an MVP argument. Can a pitch? Can a starting pitcher ever be an MVP? Because they're going to play 34 games when you're going to have someone out there that's playing almost 160. So yeah, there's a little bit that like I would have been fine if it was Rendon. Kind of would have been cool if it was Soto. Kind of would have been cool if it was Kendrick. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think uh, I'm fine with it. I thought something that was weird. I don't know if you were seeing this in the celebration, but <laughs> they did a. Uh, MVP chant with Rendon because he's their team MVP and he might win the NL MVP. But I thought that was a little odd because it's like, well, that the other guy just kind of got named it. Should have just done it for everyone. Yeah. Um, but like yeah, everyone's I, got their personal. I, 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 I like the Strasburg pick. I think that game six performance was insane. Yeah. So um, did you hear his Strasburg was like credit? And this goes into your kind of you need to build a clubhouse thing. Strasburg said, like, credit to the Nationals for bringing in guys that they knew would, you know, fill the, the fill the dugout and kind of change the vibe. They ha- it, His quote was, they had me doing things I've never done before, like dance and hug, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. And he's like, I've gotten better at both of them. <laughs> gotten better at both. Hugs his baby girl. And that's, like, it, it's it's crazy. And that's, you know, sometimes you go into the deep end because you know what was a huge part of them winning this? Anthony Rendon, Juan Soto. Um, yes, Gerardo Parra teaching them to have fun. <laughs> That's important. Guys, guys I'm not here to play, but we will have fun. Yeah, here, here's the deal. Um, but have no, some, it, We have to bring up Rendon's stats, that tweet that you quote tweeted in the seventh inning or yeah. later. Holy yeah. fuck, that was insane. In the seventh inning or later... In these last couple games for Rendon, I'm trying to pull it up. Anthony Rendon's played appearances in the seventh inning or later of the Nationals' five elimination games this season. So that's wild card, two against the Dodgers, two against the Astros. Five elimination games. In his at-bats in the seventh inning or later, walk, double, home run, double, home run, double, home run. Dude's nails. Want to know why he's nails? Because he's a monk. He's got no feelings or no emotions. Even in his post-game co- press conference on the field after winning the World Series, he was as chill. He was chiller than I've ever been. I don't even get it. Like, I want to find Rendon's best friend from high school and have him on Talking Baseball for, like, three questions and be like, yo, what's, what's Anthony like? Like, what's really good, though? Yeah. Uh, what's the most he's ever been excited about? I don't know, man. I mean, you think you saw he's like a co- completely different guy, drunk or high? Um, yeah, dude. I think he's like good vibes. Like he he never has negative vibes. Like he's so relaxed. But if you see a teammate talk to him in the dugout, he's like, "Yeah, man, that's cool." Like he's having a good time out there. I really liked your tweet. It was so weird, but I really liked it. It was my weirdest tweet of the night. I I should <laughs> dig it up verbatim. I know it. I know it. It was good. You said that I, Rendon's vibe. Rendon's vibe on the baseball field is very much a guy who woke up on vacation, on a cruise, wearing clothes he's comfortable in, just kind of like walking around, like just like live so content going to the buffet line. And if anyone says hi to him, he's just going to nod and smile and be like, good morning. It's it's resort <laughs> life. That's exactly what it is. Like <laughs> Resort <he's>, life, yeah. <laughs> it's so relaxed. Good. Weird tweet. When when you're at the you know you're at the all inclusive resort and someone bumps into you and they're they're like oh would you like to try this you're like yeah absolutely I'm on vacation that's Anthony Rendon just winning the World Series. Um, I have a question. Yeah, man. Okay, what's the next question? I got it. I just got tweeted at from uh, Beacon the bitch. Beacon. Okay. Oh, I'm guessing it's Weekend Bitch, but with a B. Beacon Bitch, and she said. 
We ain't for the socials. Tighten up, youngin, at John Boy. What's that mean? What's she telling me? Jim, if you don't do it, you're in trouble. We ain't for the socials. Tighten up, youngin. What's that mean? What do I have to do? Just do it, and it's not a problem. Beaconed bitch. It's really throwing me for a loop. But if you don't tighten up, I mean, there's going to be a situation on our hands. (laughs) We ain't for the social. I don't know what the fuck that means. Um, let's do some parting, some slight parting stuff for Houston. Um, sounds like Garrett Cole's gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Weird. I mean, I need to know so much more about what went down and the tone that he had and all that shit. Because just, we don't have enough context, but like, yeah, it's fucking, that's weird vibes. Uh, Zach Greinke is on the up and up. Houston, you're excited for him next year. Verlander, you're still excited. You have some questions. Um, mm-hmm. It's, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they're still going to have that core back, a full year of Jordan Alvarez. They're they're going to be legit. It's going to be an interesting offseason for them to see if they add a major piece. I mean, they clearly value starting pitching. Do they bring in a big name? Do they not? Um, Do they add someone else to that lineup or does Kyle Tucker take off and now they're eight deep? Um, So I don't know. I mean, that that's kind of Houston's deal. And I just, and AJ, Oh, AJ Hinch manages the Mets now. So that's it. Imagine if like that, it's not going to happen, but imagine if that happened. Be crazy. Crazier things have happened. Wow. Um, Garrett Cole blocked Julia Rose. He's really lashing out. Damn. Hey Garrett, we ain't for the socials. Tighten up, youngin. Tighten up, youngin. Um, okay. Uh, th- anything else you need to say about Houston? Because there's so much Washington stuff I want to talk about. Wow. I thought we were going to wrap up the show. Okay. Uh, my end notes for Houston is um, for the 80% of fan base fans that like are cool, that sucks. I feel for you. You got a fucking really good team, though. And like you'll be back. <laughs> Half the ale is tanking still. You will you'll be back, and you got a you got one two years ago. So I don't know. Be depressed for a little bit. For the twenty percent of Astros fans that are the most obnoxious motherfuckers in the world, I hope you get humbled a little bit and realize that stop being so obnoxious. And obviously, there's Yankee fans that are just as obnoxious. I tell them the same thing constantly. It ain't it ain't an Astro thing. It's an obnoxious, new to baseball fans it's a humbling sport yeah i mean what you said verlander's wash springer's traded at the deadline to washington now (laughs) there is it starts and stops with hold on i need to can you say your say your joke again (laughs) i don't even remember what i said it was come on say 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 it again it was mean oh uh verlander's wash you're trading springer at the deadline Hey oh okay. Um, Moving on. Be good. Maybe um, they'll be fine. With the Nationals, it starts and stops with. Dude, someone just showed me a picture of Garrett Cole wearing the Boris hat. Fucking weird, man. I that turns me so off on him. Even though he's the best pitcher in baseball, I'd love to have him on my yeah. team. That's such a fucking. I don't even understand the mindset of it. Right. Like, weird. Anyway, go on. Ryan Zimmerman. Yes, retire. Go um, out on top. Go make babies. Oh, he's not. You, did you see his interview? No, what did he say? So Frank Thomas was, like, teeing him up. He's like, Ryan, I mean, this is top of the mountain. You know, clearly, you know, what what's going on. And Zimmerman goes, feel good, man. I got something left. Um, <laughs> So he's not done yet, and I I wouldn't be surprised because from the way he made it sound, he was like, <laughs> he said he has a lot left, but he was like, man, I I really love like, you know, teaching Soto and teaching Robles and the young guys. Like he's def he's clearly at that part of his career. I think the Nats bring him back on an old man one year first base contract. But um, dude, like I I I've been trying to show like the poeticness of this story. And I have, he's, been able to he's, do un, it he's under, he's under contract for next year. Even better. Um, or no, don't, I, 
I think it's big money and it's like a team option or something. I feel like I looked into they're not paying him what he's owed next year. <laughs> I think there's like a team option for like twenty mil or something. I don't think he's getting that. Um, um yeah, I don't know. It says he's got eighteen million coming his way. But uh Ryan Zimmerman, he was the first pick in franchise. They call him Mr. National. <laughs> I mean, just think it's think cool. about that for think about that for a second. Um Done. And there was a while where Ryan Zimmerman was a great player. I mean, th- this guy's a couple-time All-Star, couple-time Silver Glover. Um, you know, he's got a couple years, 33 homers, 36 homers. There was a while where Ryan Zimmerman was – him and him and Bryce Harper were like Soto and Rendon, or they were like Soto and Turner, whatever you want to make it. They were the young guys that were like – you're just younger and you're more gung ho about life. <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to win world series. We're going to be great, man. Um, and then, and I think you saw it on his face, this entire series that Ryan Zimmerman had let that pass him by. Like Ryan Zimmerman kind of let, let the glimmer leave his eye. And then he found himself in this situation and you could see it with all his heavy breathing around the field and his focusedness. Like he was the only person on the Nats that had that vibe going on. Because, like, you, it felt like he used to have that weight of his shoulders. It was gone. And now that the weight of that, sh- the weight of the world was on those other young guys' shoulders, he was there, like, oh shit, I can't yeah. blow this. Yeah. He's getting carried now. I mean, he did some lifting, but, you know, he had a team. He, he, had, he had the best reactions all series. So, yeah, he, he's $18 million team option, $2 million buyout. So they probably do They'll the buyout. They'll buy, buy out and then give him a contract for like $10 mil. $4 mil. He didn't have a great year. But he put up some tough at-bats. Um, $5 mil. Okay. Dude, just – it's a team of weirdos, man. Okay, It's a team Go of on. weirdos. You said you had a lot to say about the Nationals. I need to hear more. How do you As think Bryce Harper feels? I think he's happy for his ex friends, and yeah, he he's ex- he's excited for the future of the Phillies and to win one of his own. I don't think there's any resentment, bitterness, or anything. I think people want there to be. I don't think there is one. I think like Harper seems like a pretty normal guy. Uh, he's a douche on the field because that's what he does. He's very much like Bregman, but everything off field seems normal. I'd guess he's very happy for his ex teammates and the friends that he has there. Um, yeah, a little bit of slight jealousy. He doesn't have a ring, but I, I think that's like normal. Very normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But Jim, I'm I'm just going to kind of semi burn this. Don't play the music. Let's, I'm going to run hot through the baseball reference page. Jan Gomes. When you look at their baseball reference page, Jan Gomes is listed as their starting catcher. Caught a lot of games this series. I mean, good, not great. Had a couple okay years. First MLB player ever from Brazil. How about that? Yeah, well, there was another guy who was really, really close, but got kidnapped. Ooh, that was the worst. Okay. Mm. Um, Their listed first baseman, Matt Adams. He didn't even get used. I already told you enough about Zimmerman. We're moving on. Howie Kendrick, the grand slam against the Dodgers, the home run in this game. Like, this was easily his best season of baseball ever. Yeah. Ever. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's – how old is he? 34? All the car stuff. Loves cars. The car stuff? Um, I mean, that's bizarre. I'll, your backup catcher, Kurt Suzuki, he's 35. He had the homer off Verlander. By the way, the listed second baseman on this team is Brian Dozier. He didn't play at all this series. Just pinch hitting. Um, Trey Turner. Okay, he's kind of the one that doesn't fit in. Like, he's young, athletic, good. <laughs> like, like, does Trey Turner have a bad time on this team? Him and Soda are both young, athletic, good. Yeah, but Soto's so young that he's like, this is all he knows, and they're almost his parents. Okay. Yeah, if you were like, who's the biggest, who's the most normal? If you were to compare this Nationals team to the rest of the league, who's the most normal makeup of a player? You'd say Trey Turner. Trey Turner, yeah. He's like pretty good, borderline all star year to year. Um, Anthony Rendon, I I already told you. Maybe Rendon. The, The only thing weird about him is he's a monk. I'm I'm mad I haven't watched more Anthony Rendon. Um, it's he he's awesome. He's about to get paid paid. Juan Soto, the special one, the kid. He turns 21 during this World Series. His career is going to be interesting to follow. Our guy Craig Calcaterra was comparing him to Manny Ramirez. He's like, I just 
I just see the vibes in him. Like he's fun loving and he's a fucking insane hitter. Yeah. And he's dating his mom. Dating his mom. That's pretty cool. Um, Robles, interesting to see. Young really liked his celebration. Did you see his celebration? Yeah, we went, he went with the shiver. <laughs> yeah, he did the Thank you, God. Drop to the knees, almost arm arm shiver, punching yourself. Showed more passion than I thought in the celebration. Like, I, I am, yo, right. dude, you know, who's the other center fielder, Taylor? Yes, Michael A. Taylor. Michael A. Taylor, you need to watch him in the celebration. It's weird. He just stands on the outskirts and doesn't go in the dog pile at all. Like he's a trainer on the team. It's very odd. I didn't even point out my breakdown because I was weirded out by it. And I was like, what's going on with Michael Taylor? Anyway, Robles, I'm completely Eaton. indifferent on. Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton. I mean, here, here's a guy like, again, when our if our kids are obsessed with baseball like we are and they go through baseball reference like I do, they're going to look at Adam Eaton and say like, what the fuck? This guy batted second? Um, he's never been an all-star. He's he's kind of just a guy with with stats in this era that people are gonna look back and be like, like how many home runs did that? Adam Eaton had fifteen home runs this year. Adam Eaton would have fit in really good with the nineteen nineteen White Sox, who had been huge. He would have been gambling, yeah. um, and then would have got in so many fights, so many fights. Like when it was cool back then, and their baggy pants. Just like trading gloves at second base, whatever he would have been. Oh, dude, he would have loved it. Born in the wrong generation. Sorry about it, Adam. Howie Kendrick hit 344 this year. Um, yeah, ass crabs. I kind of did that thing. And I mean, we haven't even gotten to the pitchers. And I mean, it's it Scherzer being so special. Um, he finally gets the ring. Like, that's the generic story you get it from a team. Um, and he does this, but it's multiplied by the next spasm stuff. That's pretty crazy. Um, and then, uh, dude, the Strasburg story, story, story is like a video game. Like, oh, number one pick. Oh, you joined the team. You pitched really good. Oh, but you're kind of overlooked. And now he does this. I, I think he's going to opt out now and get paid, paid. Not that he wasn't getting paid, paid. Um, but it, it is really cool hearing him say the stuff like it, a guy that just won the World Series is talking about Gerardo Parra and a couple weirdos on the team making him hug and dance more. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, but that kind of shows baseball. Like, it, it sounds like from everything that Steve, Steven Strasburg kind of got lost in the sauce and maybe, and not to be shots fired at Max Scherzer, but when the dude who's your one-two punch is as intense as they come, you probably tell yourself you need to be as intense as they come. And... Uh, I don't know. Like it, it's it's just so cool all around. The team in 2019 with the worst MLB bullpen wins the World Series. Team, yeah. Wild. Good summary, Jake. Thank you. I'll play a sound for you real quick. Okay. Congrats. Thank the you. bike bell. The bike bell sound. Thanks, bike bell. Thank you. Here. You got anything else? No, I mean this is this is a, a talking yank specialty that we don't bring to talking baseball a lot. But um, what uh, what should we do next? <laughs> next oh, Monday uh, together or what? Behind the scenes, yeah. So yeah, yeah we'll uh, we'll thank everyone for listening. Uh, if you were listening to the episodes, you know we did daily episodes from October third to now. A couple days off here and there, but for the most part, the full month of October majority of the days we did an episode so if you followed along thank you we appreciate that uh as you most of you know this show started after the all-star break super young we got to the number one spot on uh, the charts at one point we sit in the top 10 regularly for baseball podcasts uh, and that's all thanks to you guys so we appreciate that a lot we we will be keeping it going in the off season uh i think the rough plan is one episode a week Anytime there's breaking news, we'll jump on, do like a shorter episode and maybe some shorter episodes if there's kind of topics. But we, Jake and I have a lot to figure out. We have 14 podcasts on uh, the John Boy Media Network. We have some trips coming up, some big plans. So hang with us. I mean, what's today? Uh, Thursday morning. It's Thursday, Jake. So, I mean, we'll take the weekend off come back and maybe do something next Wednesday unless something happens. Sometimes there's news. 
Uh, oh yeah, I think you're going to want to be in it by Monday because I mean we've we've kind of ignored the new managerial stuff. People are going to be opting in and out of options and stuff. So I'd uh, okay. I'd be surprised if Monday Tuesday we're not ripping. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So hang tight if you uh, if you aren't subscribed on the podcast app or whatever podcast app you use, that'd be cool. If you want to leave a review and say uh, say I don't know, I don't care what you fucking say, just give us five stars. Yeah, cook the books for a couple of days. The the reviews help do that. It would be cool to get another high high moment on the chart. Yeah, it would. Everyone go swamp up. Push us uh, to number one again. That'd be awesome. Swamp up. Uh, and we'll be back next. Uh, yeah, probably next Monday or Tuesday, and then we'll set a plan. We have a uh, we have a lot going on. So I think that's it, Jake. Someone in the chat keeps just keeps saying the Yankees spent all that money for nothing. And it's like, well, so did the so Astros. Did, so did 29 other teams. So did a lot of, only one team wins. That's what they say. Um, Cubs and know, Red Sox have more money spent. Only thing that's cares. really getting me, man, is like Zach Grinke was so good. Scherzer wasn't, but he, he's Max Scherzer. The Nationals only struck out three times tonight. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, but okay, but that's true. But home runs still win. This game was one on home runs. Yes, um, I I think what what the end game is for all these hitting arguments is like just put together the best at bats you can, and that's what the Nats did. Because yeah, you know, at at the same time, the Nats only had three strikeouts, but they had what four ground outs to the pitcher and like two check swing outs. So like, are those better? Not really. We are a pattern pod, you know. Pattern pod. Um, is it a pattern or is it some symmetry that like Verlander and Scherzer are the top dogs? Both of them had less than performances in the postseason than their counterparts Cole and Strasburg, who are both free agents. Well, we don't know Strasburg is yet. We're assuming. Well, okay, Strasburg, if you're listening, opt out, you dumb yeah. bitch. Opt out, because instead of four years, you can get like seven. Um, yeah, there, there's some symmetry there. Um, God, I don't know. I don't think there is a ton of symmetry between these two teams. Like, they both had good starting pitching, and then after that, like, no. Good third baseman. Um, but the Nats are an odd group. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of chosen one on the Astros. Altuve's won an MVP. Uh, Springer had a crazy year. Uh, Jordan Alvarez is supposed to be next. Uh, Correa is supposed to be one of the best shortstops. Like, I, I mean, you can He's do an that. apex predator. Yeah, you you can do that for a lot of this Houston's team, and the you know the calculations and numbers say they are the best team, and they had a historic season, but. They ran into a bunch of pissed off Howie Kendricks and his Struble Cabreras. Okay, here's a fun game, and then we'll leave. Okay. Which national fits most on the Astros and which Astro fits most on the Nationals? I'll go first. Juan Soto fits most on the Astros, and Josh Reddick fits most on the Nationals. Yeah, Soto feels unfair because, like... Young stud... Soto- Soto fits pretty good on any team. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying he like the, like you said they have a lot of chosen ones over there in Houston. He's a chosen one. Reddick's a bit role player. He's kind of the Adam Eaton of the Astros, so he fits over there. Yeah, a little bit. I uh, Guriel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. What, if Guriel. You like that, sure. I don't really know what to make of Yuli. Yuli. Yeah, it's tough. He impressed me with there's, his inside. There's times power. when I love his game, and then there's times when I'm like, you're not a threat at all. And then he's also got kind of the racist thing, so you just naturally take a step back from you. He made some incredible plays at first base until the one ball does go off his glove. Yeah. All right. That's the end of this, guys. That's the end of our 2019 season. We will have off-season coverage. We will be at winter meetings. So much. We will be doing breaking news, weekly episodes. We do have a, a voicemail line. That I don't know if we're going to set up for this because that might get crazy. But uh, stay stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. We're out. A shout out to Mike Rotano for the music. Ooh. You want to stay for like five minutes? Talk to the chat? Yeah.
Gotta let the music ride. What's up, chat? Thanks, thanks for hanging out with us. That's cool. A little post game. Um, this this episode was public to everyone. Usually, it's Patreon only for the live shows uh, and for the the post the post record conversations. But World Series Game Seven, so we went live for everyone. Yeah, World Series Game Seven. World Series Game Seven. Will Spring Training under Will Spring Training under the Talking Baseball Talking Yanks banner. Uh, well, talking Yanks. That's Jarv asking that. Uh, talking Yanks will be the same. Jarv. We'll do the PPPs. We'll go to Yankee Spring Training. We'll do it the same we've been doing it. Mister Pizza Face says home field means nothing. What? Right? Let's not go. Let's not all lose sleep over home field advantage next year. Pretty wild. Uh, oh, you... BBC had a good tweet. I I I wanted to shout it out. Houston was a part. Of the the 2017 World Series, the home team won every game. And this World Series, the road team won every game. That's cool. It's pretty wild. <laughs> Someone asked if we're doing historical breakdowns. Yeah, we have a, a Google Sheet um, underneath every video. There's a, a Google Sheet to submit requests. Um, so do that. I don't know. I think maybe every Tuesday, every Thursday I'm going to try and do one. Throwback Thursday, Throwback Tuesday, historical ones. Lost your audio. Still gone. My audio? Got you now. You're back. Next episode, you all should do season awards. I, I want to do like Gold Glove. I don't care about Gold Glove, actually, but Cy Young, MVP, Rookie of the Year. If you wanted to do Gold Glove, we could, but... That sounds terrible. I'm not doing Gold Glove. Every position? Yeah. It blows my mind that people vote on Gold Glove. Because, like, no one watches every player. So, like, I want to ask writers, like, hey, when you vote for Gold Glove, what are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, you play a lot of teams. Yeah, but you most you would see in other guys 18 times out of 162. Right. But, I mean, that's... I think that's how it comes together. If you have a fielder that's good, you're like, oh, LeMay, who's good. I see him day in, day out. And then another rider that doesn't have a good second baseman comes in and is like, well, I've seen LeMahieu. I've seen I've seen Colton Wong. I like Colton. I know. That, you're proving my point. It's like, what, what are yeah, we basing Yeah, it's not on? great, but <laughs> What it's, are we it's basing this off of? And then, like, all the defensive analytics suck. So, I don't get it. And they've only and they haven't been around, and baseball writers aren't voting off UZRs. But anyway, oh, we gotta do like comeback player of the year too. That's an interesting one. Uh, let's see. Rendon goes or stays? Goes. Yeah, I think he goes. Um, well, what's he? What Washington? What's his situation? Um, that's a loaded question. I he's guess. a free agent, right? He's a free agent. Does he? Um, did, the, does, la- the latest rumor was he turned down a seven-year two ten from the Nats, but it was like late in the season. Yeah, same thing they did to Harper. They tried to like you know, yeah. Um. Well, if Rendon is he going to be the top uh, position player? Like, is he going to set? The market because he's got yeah. Ma- he's got like Bra- like um, Arenado and Machado to base it off of coming off a great year. Um, I don't know if he'll get Machado money or but like he's gonna set the market, so he should definitely go. He's gonna go to the highest bidder. And that's about all you can say about that. Yeah, and it could be Washington. I mean, they're gonna win a World Series and make some money. Yeah, but they have um, so many. They have so much locked up. They have a lot locked up. Well, in, uh, a lot of guys. Strasburg might be gone. Do you think they should buy out Soto's 
arbitration or is it still too soon? Um, I think it's still too soon. Two more years of team control? I think it's more than that. Well, this Uh, is his second year in the league, right? Yeah. So he's got two more years of money being controlled. The arbitration crew convinced you, huh? Huh? Because he's got more than two more years till he's a free agent. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying he's got two more years of team-controlled money and then like three years of arbitration. Yeah, I was good. I said the arbitration for won you over because you used to just combine those in the same bucket. Oh yes, because arbitration which, is team control. Yeah, I forgot what side I'm on. Um, you were originally on the other. That's what I was saying. Both work in my brain. I understand yeah. the difference. They, they, those <laughs> people didn't. I forget who that was. Yeah. was that Tango Tiger. Who was that? Some loser. I like Tango Tiger. I don't Earliest know free agent is 2025 for Juan Soto, so they can figure it out. Yeah. Well, once they get to arbitration, they should just buy it out like everyone's doing now, like the Braves did and the Yankees did. Otherwise... We'll try. I mean, he's uh, he's Harper. He's Machado. He was the guy that was up there younger and is going to hit it in his prime. Yeah, I just wouldn't want to go to arbitration with him. Yeah. But yeah, that's not a conversation for now. Um, are the Mariners going to be building, going to be rebuilding next year? Or are they looking to try and buy... Dude, I don't know. They're going to get guys and then trade them. <laughs> I have no idea what the Mariners are doing. Yeah, there's. I, I was starting to do some research on this. There's some rumors that the, the Mariners might be like spenders. Cause they, uh, if the Mariners, think, if this was fantasy baseball, you'd kick the Mariners out of the league. Be like, you make too many trades, you ruin, you ruin everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the new thing is when you bring in your new analytics front office that all these teams are doing now eventually, I think there's like a firm two, three-year suck plan, and then there's like a spend plan after. There's like three years we're going to increase our spending. Like that's what the Padres have done. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the Mariners are supposed to be hitting that like we're about to spend some money plan. So there's some rumors around that. That'll be interesting. That's uh yeah I might uh I might use your forum to propel some questions out there and hear some from from some real fans what they what what their plan is for their team. Nice, cool. Yeah. All right, it's uh two twenty four in the morning and I still have to edit this podcast, so we are out. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Um, I don't know. We'll see you again later. <laughs>